Good day, everyone. My name is Jeff. I work for the International Part Sales team here in Stoneleigh, England. Uh, today we're in a workshop environment, so you'll have to excuse the noise if you hear any occasionally. I've worked for ADCO for just over 42 years, and I've held positions within the engineering department, service, and latterly parts. What we want to cover today are two sets of filters, one being an engine filter and the other being a fuel filter. We're going to compare the differences between an original genuine ACO part versus a spurious part. As you can imagine, with engines getting so complex today, it is vitally important that we have filters in place to not only protect the engine components, but also the fuel components. Okay, so these are the two filters we'll be talking about today, engine oil filters. Um, this is the ACO Genuine filter compared with our Spurious filter. We know, after talking to many customers within Morocco, Tunisia, uh, Kenya, Malawi and Sudan, that when they go to buy a filter, the first thing they look at is price. They'll always buy a filter based on price. The second thing they'll do is that they'll pick up the Spurious filter and they'll compare it in terms of size and weight with the ACO Genuine filter. And so long as it's about the right size and it's about the right weight, they automatically come to the conclusion that what's contained in here is exactly what's contained in here. And as you'll see in a bit, there's nothing been further from the truth. Um, before I get on to taking the tops of the filter and examining the contents, I just want to draw your attention to the ACO packaging. Whenever we deliver a part at ACO to a customer, it'll always either come in a box, a bag, or an envelope. Contained somewhere on the packaging will be an ACO logo and the hologram. This is most important. And we need to point this out to our customers. Clearly what that says there, ACCO parts. This is what makes this different to, to spurious parts. If we can compare this packaging here with the box that this filter came out of, you will notice that it also has the ACCO logo on it and also makes reference to ACCO parts. Furthermore, it also makes reference to other tractor brands that this filter will fit to. We would never ever put that sort of information on ACO packaging. So that's one to look out for. The other thing is, it doesn't show any hologram on the box. They very conveniently put a silver sticker on the bottom of their filter. It's not really a hologram, it's just a shiny bit of silver material, which makes people think it's a hologram. Also on this filter here, you'll see reference to ACCO Ford, and even in blue, you'll see the ACCO logo there in blue. You'll only ever see it in red. So now let's have a look at some of the internal components of both filters, the ACCO Genuine one and the Spurious one. Let's start with the ACCO Genuine filter. This is the filter head. As you can see on the Genuine one, we have four holes. That is where unfiltered oil passes through. It goes through the filter element itself and then comes out through that hole there as filtered oil. The thickness of that plate is four millimeters. Now, if we can compare that with the spurious filter head, you will notice they will use eight holes and the thickness of that plate is two and a half millimeters thick. The next thing we'll look at is the leak-off valve. This sits behind the filter head there and it prevents oil draining back into the engine sump when the engine is stopped. You have to realize that filters, when they're fitted to engines, they could be either fitted like this, so they're pointing down on its side at an angle or completely upside down. 
What you don't want in those three positions is for the oil to drain out of the filter and back into the sump. Because that means the next time you start the engine, for about two or three seconds, it'll be running dry. That doesn't seem an awful lot, but over the course of a day, if you stop and start the engine six or seven times, it can mount up for a considerable amount of time the engine is running dry. So, that's the ACO Genuine leak-off valve. This is a spurious one. You will notice that ours is shaped, it's made of silicon, and it's designed to resist high oil temperatures within the engine. If I get out of our valve and give it a good squash, a good squeeze, you will notice straight away that it springs back to its original position. If we take the spurious leak-off valve, I can give that a good squeeze and release, it will not return back to its original position. That would be completely useless in terms of service life, completely useless. So now let's have a look at the filter elements themselves. We'll begin first of all with the ACO Genuine filter. As you can see, there's plenty of filter area. Pleats are very nicely evenly spaced. I can actually apply a pressure to this filter and it will not deform. Where the two ends of the pleats meet, we have a steel seam that goes from the top of the filter right down to the bottom. That ensures a good seal so we don't get any unfiltered oil going through, this, through the seams, the two seams. On the bottom here, we have a relief valve. What that is there for if that filter should get blocked for any, any reason, this valve will come off its seat and it will allow unfiltered oil into the engine. The reasoning behind that is that it's better to have unfiltered oil go into the engine rather than none at all. The valve should be fairly difficult, fairly hard to, to, to press in and as you can hear, as I release it, it firmly closes fast onto its seat. If we now compare that with the spurious filter, you can see straight away there is a vast difference between the filter element itself. This is a lot smaller, of course. The pleats are unevenly spaced. If I was to squash that now, it would just completely, completely collapse. So I'm not going to do that. Remember I told you about the seam that runs down the length of our filter to seal off the two filter ends. On this spurious filter here, all we have is just one staple. One staple, which means the gap either side of the staple is completely open. The filter is completely open for dirty oil to go back into the engine. On the bottom of the filter, their relief valve is a lot considerably smaller than ours and also it is so easy to open I doubt whether it's doing anything at all to the performance of the filter. I would imagine that that would stay open constantly because it offers very very little resistance indeed compared with this. Now what I want to do now is compare the surface area of both filters. What I'm going to do is to remove the top and bottom and then literally stretch the filter out. So if we do the spurious filter first, this here represents the amount of filter area you have on that filter, spurious filter there. If you compare that with the ACO Genuine filter, we have the ACO Genuine filter element. As you can see, there is a considerable difference. If I was to lay that on top of there for you, we have approximately four times the amount of filter area. Now, if I'd have bought the spurious filter for just a third less than the genuine filter, then I'd have felt cheated. 
OK, so if you recall at the start of the presentation, when I showed you the two filters together, I said they were the same weight. Well, when you consider that the end plate on the ACO filter is 4 mil thick, and this end plate on the spurious filter is only 2.5 mil thick, there's a weight difference. And also, when you consider the weight difference between those two filters, this all adds up. So exactly what, how does the spurious supplier get over this problem? Well, it's quite simple really. They put in the bottom of their filter base an old filter head. They're actually cheating us. They're cheating you. They're cheating you. They're trying to make it appear like an ACO genuine filter. Another difference between the two filters, the ACO genuine and the spurious one, is that when we put our filters together, to keep a, a good contact between the filter body and the filter head, we put a spring plate underneath that keeps it all tight. Because of the height difference in filters between genuine and spurious, what our spurious manufacturer does, he fits a longer spring like that. And of course, this spring weighs slightly more than our steel spring, so that's another way he's cheating you to think that this is as good as the ACO genuine part. Let's have a look at some fuel filters now. We will start with the ACO genuine parts filter. Uh, as you can see straight away, we have the ACO logo on here as well as ACO parts. If we can compare that now with this spurious filter, we don't have any markings whatsoever. We have no idea where this filter came from. No idea. Typically in the marketplace, the spurious filter will be 25 to 30% cheaper than the ACO genuine one. So, why is this cheaper than the genuine one? Well, let's take the two tops off and have a look. So let's start with the ACO genuine fuel filter first. If I pull that apart, you will notice straight away that the filter matrix itself is bonded to the end cap. This is done for a reason. It prevents unfiltered fuel escaping between the edge of the case and the filter matrix. Because what we don't want is unfiltered fuel in fuel lines. Because that will seriously affect the reliability of diesel components, which is, we, which is what we don't want. Secondly, as you can see by the filter matrix itself, very tightly packed, good quality matrix, and if I was to give that a good squeeze, it keeps its shape. In fact, it bounces back to its original size. Let's compare that then with the spurious equivalent. If we take the top off this filter head, you'll see straight away that this isn't bonded to its head. Therefore, already we're running the risk of unfiltered fuel escaping into our fuel lines. If we remove the filter matrix here, and if I put it against, compare it with the ACO Genuine filter, you'll see straight away this is made of paper. It is made to look as big as the ACO filter for the simple reason that this manufacturer puts between the layers of filter filtration two pieces of string which has no point whatsoever for the filter itself. It's purely there to bulk out the material. The filter matrix itself is made of paper. If I was to give that a good squeeze, as you can see, clearly deforms quite easily compared with the ACO genuine filter. I doubt very much indeed whether this would filter any fuel whatsoever. So it's extremely important 
to protect the internal components of the engine that we fit an ACCA genuine part. <laughs>